Hey everyone, this video is going to be about uh, knowing when to throw in the towel. There's a lot of repairs and data recoveries and really, really, really crazy things that I get myself into, but sometimes you bump into situations where um, you just you just got to throw in the towel. Can you figure it out? Yeah, maybe. Are your prob is your probability of success high? Not at all. And I'm going to show you what it is that I'm talking about, and I'm not just like being a wuss about it either. So. The first thing I'm going to show you here is a non-working iPhone 6 Plus PCB. This unfortunate PCB has had something really, really, really nasty done to it. It has had something dropped on it that actually punctured the screen assembly. And if you look at the back of the phone that this PCB came out of, you can see where you've got this marking on the back. Now, as you can imagine, to get to this spot on the back of the housing, you have to go through here. And to go through here, you have to go through here. And this is blurry, but I'm going to show it to you clear here in just a minute. Uh, so it's a really, really, really nasty injury. And I'm going to show you what this looks like now under the microscope so that you can absorb the magnitude of this injury. Not having the stereo depth perception here, it's really hard to tell just exactly how bad this is. But if we get it up on its side... I'm going to try to do this looking at my screen so I can try to show you how bad this is. Um, it's really difficult to show you. Let's try it with this Logitech camera. Okay, here you can see it. But just as I get this bubble of light in the right spot, and there, okay. This is going to really suck, but this is about the best that I can do right now, okay? If... You look at this area right here, and watch what this little reflection of light does across this area. You see that area of the PCB? It's actually crushed. It's been, it's been crushed. It's, it's pushed in. Really, really difficult for me to show that on camera, but... I think I've recorded enough little spots where you can actually see that that's crushed. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like now on the back side, uh, back side of the PCB where that impact would have came out. Now you'll notice that I've already done a lot of work to this. Yes, like I actually tried to get the data out of this. So this PCB has been crushed to the point where the audio I see was shattered into bits and the PCB here is protruding like it's coming outward and you can see uh, it's actually fractured it's it's the PCB has been punctured completely punctured here's a part where it's coming apart might have to zoom out a little farther so that you can appreciate this because the lighting is awful. I don't know if I'm going to get this in the microscope view or not. Maybe. The PCB is actually coming apart. There's a crack that runs through here. So, the damn thing has actually been completely punctured and I was nutty enough to try to get the data off of it. So here's where I'm at on this. There's a lot of repairs where you have a hard time finding a finish point. Like that's what the rabbit hole is. That's what rabbit holes are where you you know there's just one more thing and there's always something you can try and there's these different paths that you can go down, different tunnels, different rabbit holes that you can go down to try to solve stuff like this. But sometimes it's really nice to bump into definitive things that you can say, I can't recover this because of this and this is one of those situations and I'm going to show you why because maybe it will help other people to check something like this first rather than spending a long time troubleshooting all the power lines for chestnut and, and, and getting the power back up because I've got a phone here that I am able to boot with no image on the screen I've got power coming to chestnut I've got I got things going on but I have no image on the screen and I'm going to show you why First thing we're going to do is we're going to use a working iPhone 6 Plus board. We're going to go up the left side of the connector. 
Just before I do that, I'm going to show you ZXW tool and what we're doing up the left side of the connector here. We're checking our 1V8 line, we're checking uh, ground, and then the rest of these things are filters. Now, I have verified continuity between the pins on the connector down to the chestnut IC. I have done all this stuff to try to get an image on this thing, and what I should have did is what I'm getting ready to do right now, because I would have thrown in the towel before I ever got started. So we're going to buzz up the line here, and we're going to check for anything that is not right. All right, so I'm going to put my black probe on ground, and I'm going to use my red probe to buzz up the connector here and check everything that we can. Looks like my meter's a little messed up. Okay, so on the first pin we get 12,000 ohms. I would find that acceptable for a 1.8 volt line. The next pin should be ground. The next one is a data line, which I typically get 50,000 ohms or like 700,000. So we get 700,000 ohms, which is 0.7 mega ohms. The next one is going to be 50,000 or 700,000. We get 700,000 mega ohms. The next one's going to be ground. Okay, so we're going to carry on this, this same pattern. So we get inductor, inductor, you know, image choke, image choke. These are image data lines. So image, image, ground, image, image, ground, image. That's how this goes. So we've checked these two, image, image. This is ground. Okay, then we're going to do image. That one's kind of weird at 100,000, but okay, whatever. Okay, image, 700,000 ground. I normally do like 50,000 and 700,000 is what my normal readings are, but I'll settle for 100k at this point. All right, so there's our 50,000. Here's 100,000. So this board's weird. Maybe it's my meter today. Either way, we've got a connection. All right, ground. And then our next one is going to be 50,000, either 100 or 700,000. Okay, there's our 100 and ground. All right, and then our last one is going to be 700,000, 700,000, and ground. So we've got this, this predictable, repeatable pattern where you've got high resistance, high resistance, ground, high resistance, high resistance, ground. Uh, this one's just trolling me because I'm doing a video. Maybe it's some other rework that I've done on this board. I'm, this, this, this is one of my test boards. You know, you've got these predictable pathways here to where that connection is going back through the inductor and then it's, its next stop is to get its data from the CPU. So that, that, that's where the image comes from. Um, so let's switch over and let's have a look at the board that's been crushed by something. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay. So this is our 1v8. We're going to ignore power. Let's go straight for image data. And we get a normal reading, 700,000 ohms. The next one should be 50 or 700, 700. Okay, then ground, correct. Okay, and then we get another image data line here, 50,000 ohms, we're good. Next one, open. What? That one's open. We have no, no connection there. Um, let's go ahead and skip that. Let's move on to the next one, which should be ground. Okay, and then we'll have image data. 200, 100K, we know that's an acceptable reading. We'll move on to the next one. 2.3 mega ohms. That's a, that's a really funky reading. That's a really, really funky reading. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to get ground, and then we're going to go open. This one's getting nothing. It, it's, it's open. So let's move on. We get ground. No, wait. 700K, that one's normal. And then ground. And then the next one is 50K, that's normal. And then the next one is open. That's, that's, that's not, not normal at all. So if we look at ZXW tool, pick one of these that is in fact open or any of these, these are image chokes. So we've got this connection that comes from the pin, it goes through this image choke, and then it ultimately, after it goes through there, its next stop is the, I'm looking at the wrong screen, is the CPU. So you can see that our image lines on the CPU, they're, they're down here. And if you go down this line of inductors, all of these image lines
they're all originating from the same corner of the CPU. This PCB is actually crushed here, so I'm willing to bet you that our image data lines, they actually travel through this spot before making a turn and going up here. Okay, what if we have bad image chokes? Now, you'll notice that these image chokes, they are actually peeled off, so that when we go through here and we find one of these that's open, that's 700, that's normal, open, okay? So we can check between this pin here and then grab between the outside of this image choke, and if it's good, it should be about 3 ohms. There, 3.7 ohms. Or 2.5 or whatever they're supposed to read. It's, it's a hell of a lot more than open line. What that leaves us with is I've managed to get power and everything working to Chestnut, but if I had used my brain and went straight and checked all these lines first on this crushed PCB, I could have called no fix on this before spending all this time with it. Now, I will admit, there may be somebody out there, you know, you might be able to uncap this CPU. You may be able to take this corner of the CPU and like grind it off or, or, or do something and get to those pins. But the trouble here is that the data path from the CPU out to the display is broken inside of the PCB. And we've verified that with diagnostics measurements. This is absolutely a broken connection. You can take any iPhone 6 Plus PCB and you're going to get either 50K, 700K, or like we've seen today, 120K uh, between the image pin at the connector and the ground on the PCB. When you get them that are open like that, this is broken in, inside the PCB. And I really, really feel bad bad for this guy because this guy genuinely thought that I was going to be able to put a connector on this and send it back with an image as a working phone. But, um, dude, this is a punctured PCB. This is an absolute mess. And this is how I determined that this one was a no-fix. And um, in terms of no-fixes, it does feel really good to be able to draw a bottom line. This is what I would consider to be a bottom line. It's not up in the air as, like, 50 milliamps and brain dead. That really sucks because you don't know exactly what caused it. You, you can't say definitively what that is. This you can. This thing boots with power to chestnut. This thing does everything it's supposed to, except for get an image on the screen. Everything works except for it don't get an image, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, so, guys, this is a little bit of a sad story here. I'm throwing in the towel on this one, and because I've found broken lines between the connector and the CPU... Um, I'm deciding when to throw in the towel because that's just, no. Uh, anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, I didn't really fix anything here, but maybe that'll help you decide whether or not to try to fix something. So uh, I shouldn't have spent so much time on this one. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.